I'm going to show the acute triangle that I use for tibial nailing. It's a nice soft surface for the nailing procedures, and what happens is that the knee will be supported by this relatively stable platform. This can be brought onto the field because we have these custom bags into which the pieces can be placed. So you see how these just drop in as an inverted triangle and are maintained? The custom bag has this durable cover at the apex of the triangle. Again, quite stable, and the knee is allowed to sink into the acute triangle, providing stability. Now this is what we call the obtuse triangle, and I use this for retrograde because this is the angle that the knee needs to be at to pass a guide wire down the femoral canal, the reamer, and the rest of the instrumentation. So this angle, the obtuse wedge, is designed for retrograde femoral nailing procedures. Now, in the case of a retrograde femoral nailing procedure, one would typically, with a freehand approach, want the patient tipped up approximately 25 degrees. So this is a body wedge which really fits underneath the thorax and the buttock to tip the entire patient up during the procedure. The lateral wedge tips up underneath the thorax and buttock to be able to do that. Now, you can see how this is designed in such a way as to allow for two angles. If you want to bump the patient up at a very sharp angle, you put them against this surface. If you want to bump them up at a more gradual angle, you put them at this surface. So I will simply tip her up to the more acute angle in case we want to internally rotate the patient more. Depending on the patient's leg and hip alignment rotation, one might want to take advantage of this different angle. If I want to bump the knee up with some flexion, as one might want to do for either a retrograde femoral nailing or perhaps a femoral plating procedure, there is a range of size in the bumps that we can use, so you can prop it under the leg like so. These can be used in combination. There are custom bags that can accommodate them, and you can see that depending on the size of the patient, you can use one, two, or all of these. Here is the larger bump. Now, the bumps are very important reduction devices. I'll demonstrate why. If one has a femur fracture in this region, in order to reduce the alignment of the femur fracture, one will want to adjust the bump, perhaps to fit right under the fracture, to support it appropriately. So this bump here is doing the reduction of the femur fracture. 